Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Lion Tribe Sayonara Wild Hearts. Uh, this is a rarity for me, at least of the last like five or six videos in this pseudo series that we've done, because I played a little bit of this in advance, because I wanted to get a feel for what was going on, and uh, honestly, I kind of got sucked in after playing the first level. So that led to me playing about a half hour. So I think I have a relatively good grasp on what the game is about and what it's trying to do compared to my usual uh, ignorance, feigned or otherwise. This is uh, a video that comes out because the game has just come out on Steam. It was previously available on Apple Arcade, I believe. I'm not sure if it was exclusive there. It might have had a multi-platform release. It is on Switch now as well uh, and possibly other platforms as well. I bought it on Steam for 10 bucks. It is uh, published by Annapurna. You might know them for Outer Wilds, not to be confused with Outer Worlds. Uh, her story, Telling Lies, uh, the Edith Finch, etc., etc., and Samogo, who made uh, Year Walk, Device Six, a lot of stuff that, in particular, was really acclaimed uh, on iOS devices and mobile devices a few years ago. Not to say that they've lost any of that legacy. So, what the heck is going on here in Sayonara Wild Hearts? It is a aesthetic slash presentation driven music rhythm game um, with a, a narrative core at the center of it. Seems to be about somebody going through a breakup and perhaps the steps that come after that with, with some truly, even er, relatively early on in the game, some truly triumphant moments. You're gonna see here. So I'm gonna start us off uh, Honestly, I think we should start off with a level like maybe Doki Doki Rush here to give you a good little cross-section slash vertical slice of what the game is about. It is at its core, and just stick with me on this one. By the way, photo sensitivity warning. Good God, I forgot to mention. If you have a sensitivity to flashing lights, be aware immediately, as of right now, this video might become a little bit less palatable for you. Okay. I'm also going to lower the volume on my end, but keep it high in the mix so you guys can hear the music, because that's really, a, you know, one of the driving aspects here, pun intended. So, essentially, from a mechanic standpoint, and this is where I found myself surprised with my reaction, I, I tend to be a, a mechanics-driven guy to a large extent, and, you know, the initial pitch for this might come across as a little bit simplistic. It's a little bit like a, an artful temple run, or dare I invoke the name, Despicable Me Minion Rush, but um, really this is a game that seems a lot less about the actual uh, score attacking nature, although it definitely is there, um, and and much more about the, the kind of emotional core, the center of it, at least that's what I've gotten so far. So we just basically, we, we go through these lanes here, we're trying to pick up the collectibles, we also try not to crash into streetcars whenever possible. Um, you, you get a bonus if you switch lanes at the last possible moment um, for score attack purposes. So I could see this scratching the itch of those people who, you know, enjoy a, a Trials-like game experience or an audio surf. But really, I actually see this more almost like a, um, a Rhythm Heaven Elite Beat Agent sort of thing. Because if you're watching this right now, you're like, okay, I get it. You, you pivot left and right and, you know, you try not to get hit. It actually has a lot more going on than that uh, from a mechanical standpoint. You'll see that here in the next level. We'll play a few levels that I've already played because they're, you know, like 90 seconds long each. Um, it, it has, a, I wouldn't say it, it me, like merges genres or anything like that, but it's not exclusively about uh, just dodging obstacles as they come down a lane. We're still, I think, in almost a pseudo tutorial right now where basically, uh, you're learning about the different mechanics that are available. And the way the game is expanded upon its relatively uh, simple premise, even early on here, is is really, really satisfyingly done. I, I get that I'm speaking of it overly analytically, and I apologize, but I really can't stress enough that the uh, the presentation of the game is, is absolutely excellent. And it has a, a custom soundtrack as well that, in particular, I think... Um, you know, if you're into that kind of Scandinavian indie pop genre, you know, the the knife, Robin, stuff like that, I think, uh, I think this will be right up your alley. So let's, are we, have we done, I'm trying to see what we've done. We have not done this one. That'll be a new one for me. 
this is the one that really, to be honest, it kind of tied together like the prologue act for me. It's a little bit more of a robust level. I was, uh, it reminds me, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be invoking the names of some strange games here that might seem like they don't make any sense, but it, it also reminds me a lot of, uh, Abzu, if that makes sense. So we gotta dodge that fireball there. Um, you know, Abzu was a game that was, uh, exploration-driven in a similar fashion to a game like Journey. Uh, it might seem like a bizarre comparison here, but it, it really gives me that same kind of, like, sense of almost genre agnostic discovery. Like, I d even though this is not necessarily the type of game that might normally be in my wheelhouse, they're doing such, like, exciting and different things level to level that, you know, it, it gives you a, a certain amount of, like, y you feel compelled to keep playing because the levels are bite-sized and they're always, you know, respecting your time. Particular, like, it seems weird to say in a game, but, like, the, the cinematography is extraordinarily well done. Especially when you consider, like, I always get, not upset, but... I, I get annoyed when people talk about mobile games as if they're all uh, cut from the same cloth and, and exclusively uh, driven by, you know, uh, trying to virally infect a human being's brain in order to get them to buy as many in-app purchases as possible. This is, to me, it seems like, you know, like the platonic ideal of what I would want from mobile games. More casualized mechanics than you would be likely to see in something made bespoke for the PC, but at the same time, operating within those constraints to make something that, you know, otherwise might not have existed otherwise. So there's my overly pretentious take. <laughs> but the fact that we've, uh, that we've gone in that direction should tell you how I feel about this game. So far, at least. And, uh, you know, this is one where I've got to admit, it, it, the, the pedigree kind of spoke for itself. I played Year Walk. Uh, Year Walk was, was really inventive. Uh, and, and, you know, a, an actually genuinely scary horror game. Despite existing on a platform where, you know, for the most part, you, you might have been playing it on, you know, like a four and a half inch screen. <laughs> but uh, even in spite of that, I I know that, uh, or in, in addition to that, I should say, I know that a lot of people uh, played Sayonara Wild Hearts. I haven't had a chance to check out the Apple Arcade for myself yet. And people were saying, like, this is, you know, genuinely like a Game of the Year candidate for a certain type of individual. And at first I was like, you know, I mean, come on. How could this, uh, you know, compete with Sekiro? <laughs> But after playing it, I'm like, look, it, it's resonated with me. Oh, that was so dumb. It's resonated with me more than most games of the Zilk have resonated with me for sure. And on top of that, I, I, I totally get how, uh, you know, if you, if you like this game, I think you would be like, there's nothing like this out there right now. There's a lot of games that are a little bit similar, but this feels like the the culmination of a lot of different things going on simultaneously here. Like it. it it, it has, like, the emotional core of a meditative walking simulator while also combining that with, you know, those moments you might see in a movie where someone's, uh, you know, on the verge of tears, but then, you know, Gloria comes on and they start dancing alone in the, in the club. That's a reference to a recent uh, Julianne Moore film. I apologize. Not everybody might have watched that on an airplane semi-recently like I did. Anyway... Help. Also, the soundtrack is great. <laughs> Again, might not be your cup of tea. Is relatively my cup of tea, believe it or not. And it fits the game super well as well. In case I haven't even mentioned, by the way, you have control of your character and their movement, regardless of the camera pans, uh, with, with some minor exceptions. You might think that, that that is control being ripped away from you. It's not really. And you're also, you don't seem to be locked into exclusively whatever lanes are available. Like, you have relatively free-flowing uh, movement potential. 50,000 points, please. I would like to get a gold medal. I don't believe we'll be getting a gold medal. We'll be getting a silver rank. So yeah, that was the level that really, it, it pulled it all together for me. And I was like, you know, they got, they got something good going on here. If we're going to continue to be a little bit pretentious, this is a level I've never seen before, I'll admit. Um, it also kind of reminds me of, like, Fantasia. You know how it's uh, 
a series of vignettes anchored emotionally by the, you know, the score. I.e. The, the music. I feel like uh, there's, there's a certain semblance of that going on here. Obviously, stuff like Audio Surf is a relatively, uh, you know, reasonable comparison as well. Sorry, I'm doing extraordinarily bad right now. <laughs> That's why I wanted to start with some levels we've already seen. I will say, you know, there are, or have been, I should say, some moments where I've been a little bit disoriented. Normally, like, my motion sickness does not trigger with stuff like this. It triggers more with, uh, you know, 3D games, particularly from a first-person perspective. Um, but I think something to do with the flashing lights and the, the constantly pivoting camera. It's given me like 1 out of 10 motion sickness, but it does bear mentioning in case you've got it a little bit more, um, a little bit more, uh, acutely than I do. And in which case, from watching this video, you're probably like, oh, I get it. <laughs> I understand. There is a story going on as well, by the way. Um, I don't feel qualified to tell you how the story is going. There were three goddesses represented by three tarot cards. Another tarot card came and shattered them to the winds. Before they were completely disseminated. They imbued the lead character with the ability to save them. It's it's a pretense for sending you on some uh, mythical adventures. Should probably not have done that. <laughs> Hold on. I want it. I think those are just... I, I'm guessing the power-ups are just worth different amounts of points. I think some of them might speed you up as well, but I, I don't know. You know, it... It reminds me of like, it's Bit Trip Runner, you know? It's like a, a, I think it wears a lot of, you might think that some of these inspirations that I've brought up are nonsensical. Well, you know, in criticism, I suppose, the defense I would offer there is, you know, you have to ask the creator, but then beyond that, well, I'm just crushing this one. Um, but then beyond that, you know, I, I think it has a, a similarity to those that bears mentioning. It feels like playing Bit Trip Runner, except less punishing and more um, presentationally driven, you know? You get into a flow state with the music, it is, you know, scripted in, in musical terms. Silver, Silver rank. rank. I'll stop you right there. Silver Rank. What I mean by that is, like, you know, the when you, you change lanes on the beat, you press the, you know, the button prompts on the beat, etc, etc. You really want the full audio-visual experience here. I really thought that said forest dab. And I got excited. This one in particular, <laughs> I would encourage you perhaps to look away. But that's the other thing that's, that's really neat is how, uh, you know, every level is very different. Uh, from the levels that came before it. You know, there's a shared lineage without a doubt, but simultaneously, like, uh... Whoa. If you, uh, I, well, I wonder what this could be a metaphor for. Um... Simultaneously, if you have, uh... You know, you find a level that you don't really like... You're not stuck there forever, you know what I mean? Are we fighting now? Oh, we're back. We're not back. We've just gotten started. <laughs> Silver rank. We're in the middle of midsummer right now. I think it's also the kind of game, and I recognize this. I don't mean this in an insulting way, and it might sound a little bit insulting. I think if you like it, you're gonna like it a lot. I think that was unexpected. I think if you are, like, this seems like pretentious, minimalistic, and not up my alley, I think, A, you can't please everybody, your opinion is, is valid, this is probably one you should stay away from. But it is something that I think if you like it, you are really gonna like it. And, you know, for my money, this one's gonna get me in trouble, but even having played a half hour of this, it's got more of an emotional center than most, like, AAA narrative-driven games 
uh, with overwrought cinematics and, and dialogue. But you might get hit by different things. You might get hit by different parts. I will say I have almost no idea how to rack up a high score here. All I'm trying to do is learn how to live life again after a, a difficult in-game breakup. Take me to another exalted level, please. How many games are we playing right now that have some kind of uh, wolf component? Oh my god, it's in first person. It's like playing Descenders, but at like the fastest speed possible. That's okay, dude. Okay, third person. Okay, first person. <laughs> Honestly, you ever feel like first person games are harder for your brain to understand because you're already living life in the first person? No, just me? Okay, sorry, I was struggling to think of something to say when that happens. Oftentimes end up saying things that are a little silly. But suffice it to say, you know, oh my god. Uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts, it's also one of those games that I, I will say, you, you get the vibe from playing it uh, early on that it might not necessarily be on the super long side. Um, if this is the end of the level, okay, it's not. We'll probably end up doing, uh, ending the video after this level. Uh, just to... Great shot. You know, just to avoid, uh... Showing off too much. But suffice it to say, for ten bucks, or... I don't... I don't even know how Apple Arcade is priced, to be honest. So what I'm gonna say, instead of assigning an arbitrary, you know... Dollar value versus, you know, time investment calculation to this, is instead just say, it's... it's worth your time. If you like what you see, find it on the platform of your choice. I'm pretty sure after watching, you know, even 15 minutes of this, you're gonna be like, oh, that's a, that's a mash. After watching 15 minutes of this, you're gonna know whether it's your kind of jam or not. I promise you, your enjoyment is also being compromised by looking at a little uh, bald man in the bottom left corner of the screen uh, and hearing him ramble about, you know, Koyanis Katsi or whatever, meaninglessly while he plays the game. Once you get immersed in the experience, it, it can only benefit you. <laughs> but yeah, you know, my I was uh, not necessarily super surprised, but I will admit that I, uh, you know, this is like a late game, you know, perhaps not fully game of the year candidate, but something that I'm super stoked to have not missed out on, you know, before the end of the year conversations take place. Okay, so this is one of the long ones. Seems like so far, narratively, it has been divided into like, you know, you get one level of discovery as you go to a new place, you meet a group of people, you have a little back and forth with them, and then uh, at some point you have this, this boss battle. It all turns. You punch the boss three times, like it's the Legend of Zelda. Oh, never mind, you punch him one time like it's the Legend of Zelda. Then you break four hearts. <laughs> and you beat the level. Anyway, that's Sayonara Wild Hearts. Really impressive. Uh, again, it it's like one of the most artfully cinematic games I've played in, in recent memory, without a doubt. Highly recommended. You can see we might be about 40% of the way through the game down there at the bottom. Uh, highly recommended. Recently came out on Steam. It's been available on Apple Arcade for a while. It's also available on Switch and perhaps other platforms as well. Thumbs up. Having a great time. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Subscribe to the Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll put a link in the video description below to check out the game on Steam. Do so if you're inclined, and I'll see you next time. See ya!